Now let us continue our discussion with prolactin in pregnancy. Okay, so prolactin in pregnancy, especially if you see in a non-pregnant female, in a non-pregnant female, the normal values of prolactin is uh, 15 nanogram per milliliter. Okay. So prolactin in normal non-pregnant female it is 15 nanogram per milliliter and if this in this normal preg uh, non-pregnant female if the prolactin value is greater than 25 nanogram per milliliter then it is called as hyper prolactinemia okay and next coming to in pregnant female okay uh, the prolactin level is 115 nanogram per milliliter so in normal pregnant female it will be 115 nanogram per milliliter uh, and also it is maximum especially at labor and what are the influences of prolactin like estrogen actually estrogen puts its uh, you know control on prolactin by it will have a positive effect on lactotrophs so because of positive effect on lactotrophs it will increase the prolactin and also it keeps a activity check mainly by negative effect so it is also having both positive and negative effect on the prolactin so estrogen controls the prolactin okay so after delivery what happens after delivery estrogen level drops then what happens to the prolactin as estrogen drops even the prolactin will drop okay so but when are coming to milk production at that time again prolactin will rise because milk production uh, is done by prolactin so now coming to dopamine dopamine also have act on prolactin dopamine is actually prolactin inhibiting hormone it inhibits the prolactin okay in the female after delivery uh, as decreased milk production uh, for example you take one pregnant female in which uh, the milk production is reduced the milk production is reduced in this female so now to increase the milk production in this female we give dopamine inhibitors like metoclopramide why we are giving dopamine inhibitors the one thing you need to understand that dopamine usually inhibits the prolactin dopamine inhibits the prolactin so now here in this patient the my milk production is low so now we need to increase the milk production so that we need to decrease the dopamine so inhibit the dopamine use metaclopramide decrease the dopamine so that will increase the milk production in this female okay so now coming to another female in this female there is iud so in this female as there is iud we need to stop the lactation right so to stop the lactation in this female we give dopamine uh, dopaminergic drugs okay to you dopaminergic drugs uh, like you can take examples of dopaminergic drugs like cabergolin bromocriptin pyridoxine and also we can give estrogen in high levels but you can also give high levels of estrogen but we will not use high levels of estrogen because again estrogen may have an effect to produce the uh, lactotrophs and increase the prolactin but here the problem is itself uh, the female is having iud so we need to stop the lactation so so to stop the lactation we use this cabergolin bromocriptin pyridoxine and high levels of estrogen but this is not recommended now we'll discuss about another female in which actually in this female the breast has engorged the breast is engorged but the problem is the milk is not ejecting out so for that we may use a breast pump artificially to eject out the uh, you know milk and also we use of course oxytocin because which is a main hormone required for milk ejection so now coming to vaginal cervical and uterine changes during pregnancy so what happens already we know the chadwick sign or uh, you know our uh, Jack Quiner sign, we discussed this about uh, in our previous video, right? So, what is there in the Chadwick sign? The Chadwick sign, there is bluish discoloration. You know, there is a bluish discoloration of vagina and cervix, right? Both vagina and cervix will become blue in color. And there is also increase of a bacteria, useful bacteria called as Doderlein's bacteria in the vagina. 
so because of this deuterline bacteria it is actually a lactobacilli type of bacteria so this will actually convert the glycogen the glycogen which is present in the vaginal epithelium in the presence of lactobacilli will increase the lactic acid and this lactic acid will increase uh, acidity so when acidity is increased you can understand the ph will drop so ph is drop so this is the reason why the vagina is acidic mainly because of a lactobacilli that is the deuterlanes which is present in the vagina which is converting the glycogen present in the vagina to more lactic acid so hence more acidity so this acidity nature of the vagina is actually preventing the pathogenic bacteria okay so now coming to another so one bacteria which can you know lead to vaginitis most common vaginitis especially in pregnancy is candida so candida can cause infections even though it is acidic okay so now coming to cervical changes so till now we understood all the vaginal changes cervical changes in pregnancy are like cervix mouth is formed by a mucus thick mucus very thick mucus this thick mus mucus will prevent the infection it is released when the cervix dilates at the time of labor so you know at the time of labor because of dilation this mucus will open out that is called a show okay so you try and change us in pregnancy now let us see what are those for example uh, in a non pregnant female the weight of uterus is 50 to 80 grams just 50 to 80 grams in a non pregnant okay in a pregnant female it will be like about 1100 grams so you can see how much it has increased from 50 to 80 to 1100 so it's a marked hypertrophy but limited hyperplasia coming to the length of the uterus in a normal female 7.5 cm but in the case of pregnant female it is 35 cm next coming to volume volume will be around 5 to 10 ml in the case of non pregnant female and in the pregnant female it will be 5 liters or like you can say up to 20 liters on the shape of the vagina uh, you know uterus is pear shape whereas in the pregnant female it is globular first next in a 12 weeks it will turn into spherical and next it will turn into ovoid finally okay so this are very important table non pregnant normal female 50 to 80 grams uterus 7.5 cm length 5 to 10 ml of volume pear shaped in pregnant female 110 grams 35 cm length 5 liter to 20 liter volume globular shape first spherical shape next ovoid shape next from second trimester especially from second trimester there is one sign called as bracton's hicks contraction so what is this actually this is sporadic contraction it's infrequent and it's painless so these are the contractions uh, especially in iup you will see it 5 to 25 mm of mercury and near term this is called as false labor okay so now coming to there is dextro rotation or uh, actually there is dextro rotation you know our uterus will undergo dextro rotation especially towards the right side uh, why not on the left because on left side there is sigmoid colon okay so this thing you need to remember next coming to hematological changes this is the last part of our today's video okay hematological changes during pregnancy what are those hematological changes uh, let us see what will increase and what will decrease okay so first when uh, the blood volume is going to increase during pregnancy the maximum of uh, blood volume will increase in mid trimester okay plasma volume will increase to 40% okay rbc volume will increase to 20% 
and uh, no erythrocyte and reticular site will increase the maternal erythropoietin will also increase maternal erythropoietin will increase okay so now coming to decrease levels viscosity of the blood will decrease so hemodilution is a physiological anemia and hemoglobin has not less than 11 grams paxil volume will decrease that is hematocrit will decrease and that's it now coming to hemoglobin mass the mass of hemoglobin will increase like uh, sex hormone sorry like uh, causing increased oxygen carrying capacity of the blood whereas hemoglobin here let me write mass here hemoglobin concentration will decrease okay next coming to plasma proteins the plasma proteins will increase here plasma proteins concentration will decrease okay here globulins will increase like you can take sex, sex hormone binding globulin thyroid binding globulin all this will increase so normal uh, a to g if you see normal albumin to globulin ratio if you see 1.7 to 1 and in a pregnant female if you see albumin to globulin ratio will be 1 is to 1 because globulin has also increased okay so now uh, so now coming to albumin albumin will decrease in pregnancy okay and next wbc wbc will also increase in pregnancy and uh, especially the total leukocyte count will be 15,000 and in postpartum total leukocyte will be about 25,000 and uh, neutrophils and lymphocytes increase especially B lymphocytes CD4 to CD8 are normal okay here coming to here the platelets will decrease platelet will decrease but not not than normal also known as bending gestational thrombocytopenia due to hemodilution and spleno splenomegaly there is decreased monocytes okay and pregnancy is an immunocompromised stage which you need to remember next coming to humoral immunity here the humoral immunity will increase okay and here the cell mediated will decrease and uh, especially t helper cells 2 type 2 will increase t helper 2 will increase t helper 1 will decrease this is called as th1 shift to th2 and it is not seen in a pregnant woman with pih okay next coming to interleukins let me write down here interleukin 4 10 13 will increase okay especially the diseases which are related to this are the especially the diseases related to th2 will flare example you can you take sle so this all increase this is decrease in pregnancy okay so interleukin 2 will decrease tumor necrosis factor will decrease and any disease which is mediated by uh, th1 will improve in pregnancy like hashimoto's thyroidus Hashimoto's thyroiditis, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis. All this will decrease. I mean, uh, they are aggravated in this case. Next coming to all inflammatory markers will increase. Like you can take all clotting factors. And important thing is pregnancy is hypercoagable state. Next coming to factor 2. Factor 2, 13, not 2, 11, 11, 13 will decrease. Especially factor 13 is a fibrin stabilizing factor. 
ओके नेक्स्ट कमेंट टू सीरम फाइब्रिनोज जैन लेवन विल इंक्रीज सीरम फाइब्रिनोज जैन विल इंक्रीज फिर एस फिब्रिनोलाइटिक एक्टिविटी एक्टिविटी विल डिक्रीज सो द प्लास्मिनो जैन विल नॉट कन्वर्ट इन टू प्लास्मिन टी पी एज ए टिश्यू प्लास्मिनोजन एक्टिवेटर ओके ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी द टी पी ए इनिबेटर इंक्रीजेस सो एंटीकॉगलेंस प्रोटीन सी एंड एस ऑल्सो डिक्रीज प्रोटीन सी एंड प्रोटीन एस ऑल्सो विल डिक्रीज सो द साइज ऑफ द स्प्लीन विल इंक्रीज बाई फिफ्टी परसेंट ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी ओके साइज ऑफ स्प्लीन इंक्रीज बाई फिफ्टी परसेंट द ब्लड पैरामीटर्स आर अनचेंज इन प्रेगनेंसी वॉट ब्लड पैरामीटर्स आर अनचेंज दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दट इज बी लिम्फोसाइड्स सी डी फोर टू सी डी एट रेशियो ब्रीडिंग टाइम क्लॉटिंग टाइम एंड एंटी थ्रोमिंग टाइम ओके दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो बाई दिस यू आर कंप्लीटेड विद दिस नेक्स्ट इज सर्विस चेंजेस इन रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम Uh, I mean, we'll continue this.